Looks good. You know, there's a lot you can learn from your breakfast. Black what? Well, what looks like an egg, but is actually about a trillion times bigger than the sun. Even though there's no way for us to actually look down and see the entire Milky Way galaxy, the galaxy we all live in, astronomers believe it might look something like your breakfast. The white and the yellow parts are like the hundreds of billions of stars that make up the Milky Way. That's because the Milky Way is what's called a spiral galaxy, because it looks like a pinwheel. Mmm, delicious. So we've all heard the universe is huge, but how big are we talking? Well, before we think big, we have to think small. Smaller, that is. This is the sun, which is actually a star. It's big. So big, in fact, it would take about 109 Earths placed end to end to equal the sun's diameter. This is a galaxy, the Milky Way, in fact. It's huge. It's made up of billions of stars, and it's about a trillion times larger than the size of our sun. Galaxies come in all shapes and sizes. They can be a spiral, like the Milky Way, or elliptical, or irregular. And the Milky Way is part of the universe. The universe is everything. Planets, stars, galaxies, even you. Nothing is bigger. So let's put it into perspective. Our sun is a star. There are about 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy and about 100 billion other galaxies in the universe and three people in the pop rock band, the Jonas Brothers. So add it all together and that's about 100 million trillion stars and three Jonas Brothers in the entire universe. Wow. You know, there are as many stars in the universe as there are grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth. That's just how big the universe is. That's humongous. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Now keep in mind, everything in the universe, stars, planets, galaxies, it's really spread out. The farthest humans have ever traveled was to the moon, and it took about three days, and the moon is our closest cosmic neighbor. If you traveled at the speed the Apollo spacecrafts traveled to the moon, it would take you about 900,000 years to get to the next nearest star after the sun. That's a long trip. Are you still mad at me? I'm sorry I ate your gummy bears. I'm not in the mood for music. So how do scientists figure out exactly how far away stars are? Since they can't measure the distance by actually traveling there, they have to work with what they can see. This experiment shows one way scientists do this. I'm going to close my right eye and hold my thumb over a piece of art. Now, without moving my head or my thumb, I'm going to close my left eye and open my right one. Check that out. My thumb isn't covering the art anymore. It looks as though my thumb moved, even though I didn't move it. Why is that? In actual astronomy, parallax is a little more complicated and requires two images taken farther apart than the distance between your eyes. In fact, since stars are so far away, astronomers need the largest baseline distance possible, which is actually two opposing points of the Earth's orbit. Scientists take an image of a star in January, then another image when the Earth is on the opposite side of the Sun in July. Depending on where the star is, scientists might take images at March and September, or May and November, any two opposite points of the Earth's orbit. Astronomers measure the parallax, the apparent shift of the star, against the background of more distant stars. They find the parallactic angle, and from that, determine the distance from the Earth to the star. Piece of cake. 
It may sound complicated, but it's actually simple trigonometry. Parallax is all about finding the missing length. We know the baseline distance, the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Using the parallactic angle, we can find the distance from the Sun to the star. After that, all that's left is to find the missing distance from the Earth to the star. Now let's put it all together. The stars make up the galaxies that make up the universe, which is inconceivably huge. There are 100 million trillion stars in the universe, just like our sun, many with orbiting planets. Astronomers can calculate the distance of nearby stars by finding the parallax. And the distance is so large, they measure it in light years. The distance light travels in one year. In fact, some of the starlight we see is actually old light that's continued to travel from stars that may have since died. So really, looking up at the stars is looking back in time. Weird, huh? Ooh. Did I ever tell you what you can learn by looking at French toast? 